Yeah. <laughs> I want to welcome all of you back. It feels really, really good to be with you again. I've been so missing our little community. So welcome. Find your cozy spot. And let's meditate together. For those of you who are new, I do these as separate meditations. So they don't build on each other and that's very intentional. I want you to be able to come to the ones you can come to and not worry about it if you have to miss some. And um, I try to gear it towards so that people who are just learning how to meditate will benefit and people who've been meditating a long time would benefit too. And while I try my best, I know that I'm not for everyone. So if it doesn't resonate, I would encourage you to find other teachers. There's so many great teachers out there. And I try to mix it up. So each week is a little bit different. And um, yeah. So the invitation now would be to find your comfy spot. Ideally sitting either on a chair with your feet on the floor or um, cross-legged, either on a chair or on the floor. Or if you know that you're more comfortable lying down, my very strong encouragement would be to lie down. Over the years of teaching and being in my own body and aging, um, I've really noticed that a lot of times I just do better meditating lying down. And so trust your body, listen to your body, do what's best for your body today. I typically close my eyes when I meditate because it's easier for me to go inward when I do that. Listen to your own inner voice. What feels best to you today without any shoulds? Does it feel good to close your eyes? Or does it feel better to look out at the sky? Or a flower? And seeing if you can keep your gaze constant and ideally not on something that's moving, ideally not on the screen, mostly because that will pull you out of yourself. Now, that being said, if you have a trauma history and having your eyes open and connecting with me by looking at me, if that brings a feeling of safety, then trust that. I know many of you have been with me before, but I really like to emphasize trusting your own inner voice above anyone else, including me, especially me. Trust what you need. You know best. Hmm. If you are sitting up, finding a posture that is upright, but not rigid. Seeing if you can find some softness in your body. I'm just beginning with three breaths, and this is how I'm gonna invite you to do it. You're gonna breathe in through the nose, hold at the top of the inhale. You're gonna be using your diaphragm, so your belly is gonna be pushing outward with the in-breath. And fill your lungs, fill your belly with air, and then at the top of the inhale, you're gonna hold for a short period of time. For some, it might be two seconds, three, four, five, six, seven, not more than about seven. And you can just feel it. You don't even have to count it. And then you're gonna breathe out really slowly through the mouth. And to slow down the exhale, you can purse your lips. 
And for some of you who are into yoga, you may know ujjayi breathing, which is where you sort of tense the back of your throat and your mouth is closed. And it sounds like Darth Vader kind of in your head. So it's that throat constriction slows down the exhale. So we're not gonna get too concerned about numbers today, but the idea is that the inhale is about half as long as the exhale. If you have breathing problems, if you have COPD or asthma, don't do the breath hold. It's just not gonna feel good probably. And if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. So if you try it one time and it, it, it results in tension, don't do the breath hold. This is not about perfection. It's about creating ease in the body. It's about utilizing what we know about our nervous system. It's about tuning into the nerve, the vagus nerve that goes right through the diaphragm. And because of that vagus nerve and its ability to turn on the neurochemicals, the hormones in our body that are resting and cause rest and relaxation and calming and soothing. We're gonna tune in to that ability. And this is a very powerful exercise. It's something I use every day, multiple times a day in my private practice with my clients. It's one of the first things I teach because it really does work especially the more you do it. So inhale around a count of four, exhale around a count of eight. But again, it's all about what works for your body. So it could be three and six, it could be five and 10. You don't even really have to count unless you want to. There's some people that will help you actually focus in the breathing even more. So if you wanna count, that's fine. Go at your own pace. And I think we're gonna do, let's do four to start. Whenever you're ready, beginning, inhaling through the nose. you finish your four breaths before I do, just keep going. And now rest in your comfortable breath, feel your body, notice the mind. pausing and opening your eyes. So inwardly notice, ask, is there a difference between 
when you got online versus after those four breaths? There might be, there might not. This is a practice that for some people can work right away within four breaths. And for others, um, for me, it was more like I needed to practice it for several days before I started to feel the impact on my nervous system. I tend historically to have a lot of anxiety. And so I think if we're more amped up, it's a little harder to feel the effects of something subtle like this. Um, you may notice a little bit of dizziness. It's not dangerous. It's just that whoosh of the parasympathetic nervous system that can sometimes have people feeling a little bit lightheaded, a little altered. It's definitely not dangerous. Um, it, it's never caused harm. Um, so let's do four more breaths. And this time I'd invite you on the out breath to see if you can tune into the body and the face and the mouth, especially letting go. So the out breath is a natural moment of letting go. So see if you can tune into the letting go that the body already does and just really bask in that softening that naturally happens. So same thing in through the nose about a count of three or four holding if you don't have asthma or COPD or other breathing conditions for several counts and then out through the mouth pursing the lips or doing ujjayi breathing if you're familiar with that if you're not don't worry about it let's do four more breaths at your own pace, at your own rhythm, fine tuning what feels good. If it's creating tension, it's, it's, it's you're trying too hard. So tuning into what feels good and really tuning into that out breath and the automatic softening that already is happening. Whenever you're ready, four breaths. If you finish before me, keep going. Pause, breathe, and notice. Let your jaw drop, let your mouth soften. If you're up for it, four more breaths like that at your own pace. 
you want to stay in natural breathing, that's fine too. Four more breaths for those who want to. Pause, breathe, and notice. Opening your eyes if you wish, or keeping them closed and staying inwardly focused, whichever feels good right now. So when I work one-on-one -on -one with clients and I teach this, my recommendation if you struggle with anxiety or you're in a stressful period in your life is to do this every 30 minutes. It's a very short practice. So usually I say set an alarm on your phone if you can, if you have a work life that accommodates that. If you don't, just doing it as often as possible. It's like it's a bit like a medicine in terms of the more you do it, the higher the dose and the better it works. And it's such a subtle medicine that if you have a lot of anxiety, then dosing it higher will help. So if you're somebody who struggles with a lot of anxiety, doing it every 30 minutes, eight breaths like this, at the end, I'm gonna to try to remember, and maybe Misty can help me remember, to just post in the chat that Dr. Andrew Weil on YouTube has a really nice video that really excellently describes this four, seven, he calls it four, seven, eight breathing, even though the numbers can be adjusted. So, all right. Going back inward, staying inward if you're already there. And beginning by just noticing your breath now. Noticing where it's easiest to tune into your breath. Might be the nose or the back of the throat. Might be the stretch of your rib cage in your chest. For some, it might be the expansion of the belly when you inhale, softening of the belly and the exhale. So just tuning in to 
wherever the breathing feels good. And seeing if you can welcome the breath how it is today, noticing the nuances. And the breath is a subtle thing to focus on. So if you're new to meditation, be really gentle with yourself that it can be one of the most subtle things to focus on. We'll learn other things to focus on, other objects of awareness. But be really easy with yourself. The mind is very busy, and that's the mind's job. So when you get pulled out of the awareness of the breath or whatever other object of awareness we're, we're with, be very gentle. Ha try to have the attitude of non-judgment, the intention of non-judgment, and simply notice, oh, I was paying attention to my breathing, and now I'm thinking about what I need to get at the grocery store. Doesn't have to be a big deal, and it's not a problem. And we can just begin again and again, coming back to the breath again and again. And if you're noticing that the breath is so subtle that it's hard for you to stay focused, no worries, we'll find other things you can focus on. What works for one doesn't work for everybody. So now shifting your awareness, I'm gonna go through layers of awareness. The first layer is the layer of the physical body. Seeing if you can tune into your physical body. And almost like you're an explorer with curiosity. Even if you think you know the territory, this land of your body, seeing if you can approach it as if you've never explored this body before, as if you don't know what's here, especially when we have chronic pain, we can think that we know what that's like, but see if you can approach it with some level of curiosity and with a lot of allowing a lot of a sense of welcoming, invitation. So we're not trying to make the body be different than it already is. We're simply noticing what's already here. Tracking, what is it like to be in my body today? Noticing areas of ease, and discomfort, noticing temperature, noticing areas of neutrality. And if you are having pain today, seeing if you can imagine breathing into discomfort or pain, directing your breath into that area of the body imagining that you can give it more space and allowing that space to give you some more room to observe the fluctuating sensations of anything, but especially of pain. When I've had severe pain in the past, I notice that I wall it off like a black box because I don't wanna feel it. 
but this can be one way to work with pain is to notice that actually it's not static, it's quite dynamic, it's shifting and changing. See if you can ride the waves of sensation, just noticing what is already here. Noticing any resistance or judgment to certain parts of the body or certain sensations. And even including that, allowing there to be resistance. Noticing what does resistance feel like in the body? What does judgment feel like? And now shifting your awareness to your emotional body. And if it resonates, I'd invite you to put one or both hands on your heart or maybe a hand on your heart and a hand on your stomach. And again, just like with the body, the invitation is to notice what is already here. Notice what emotions are present in the body today. They may show up as sensations in the body. They may have names, they may not. There may be a ball of emotions, a storm, or they may be very subtle or maybe even so subtle you can't detect any. And again, it's all welcome. And just maybe asking, what's on my heart today? What's here today? Seeing if you can approach your own emotional self with allowing, with care, and also noticing those parts that want to judge or criticize or tell stories and seeing if you can notice those parts if they're here, see them and then drop the story and come back to the body, come back to the emotions in the body without even needing to understand them or have a name. Just being with your emotions as they are
Moving your awareness now to the layer of mind, which can be the most tricky. As it wants to be in control. But this time we're approaching the mind a little bit differently than maybe you have before. We're not trying to control it. We're not trying to confine it or silence it. We're actually just being with and noticing, huh, what is it like to be in this head of mine today? Is it loud? Is it soft? Is it chatty? Is it quiet or something in between? Maybe noticing the content of your thoughts. And using the breath as an anchor so that you can notice the thoughts from the seat of witness. And like I said, this is, this is the trickiest one because the mind will sweep you away. So it's sort of like noticing the thoughts back to the breath. Noticing the thoughts back to the breath. And then at some point in your practice, on some days, it may be that you can notice the breath and be aware of thoughts as they drift on by. And if you grab onto a thought train and you get swept away, well, congratulations, you're human, you're normal. <laughs> and again, it's not about fixing anything. It's just noticing what is this mind like today? Now shifting your awareness, expanding it in a way such that the breath is your anchor. So the breath is tying you to the present moment. It's always here, it's always now. Picking a place to bring awareness to the sensations of breath. If a mantra is easier for you, if having words, you can use the mantra so, on the inhale and hum on the exhale. So hum, and this is inward, this is in your own mind. So inhale, hum, exhale, or you can simply focus on the sensations of breath. While you're doing that, all of the phenomena that we've already addressed and more because there's all of our sensations, there's hearing, there's tasting, there's smelling. All of the sensations are present as well. All of these phenomena are drifting through our awareness along with the awareness of body sensation, emotion, and mind or thought. So for the last several minutes here, we're gonna practice in silence together to have the opportunity to See what it's like to really allow and accept where we're at right now, where you're at right now, with the intention of curiosity, using the breath not to block out all these phenomena, but to stay anchored to the present moment and stay, not just stay, but to keep coming back to this place of witness or observer where you're allowing yourself to feel the body, 
You're allowing yourself to feel the emotions, the physical sensations, the senses, and you're allowing yourself to witness your own mind, your own thoughts. So beginning that practice whenever you're ready and just continuously, if you get swept away, just coming back to the breath. That's the practice. We're not blocking anything out or what in, in fact, we're doing quite the opposite. We're welcoming it all in.
perhaps placing your hand on your heart as a gesture of there is some part of you, whether it be tiny or huge in this moment that is loving you, that knows you're worthy of love no matter what your mind is saying or doing. You can place your hand on your heart. And if you don't have use of your upper limbs, you can imagine your hand on your heart. For me, that means that no matter how loud my self-critic might be, if I can just put my hand on my heart, I know that some part of me is loving me, is accepting me as I am. As we finish our meditation today, I'd love to invite you to do three ohms with me if you can. If you can do it out loud, that's wonderful. If you're in a space or that's uncomfortable for you for whatever reason, do it in your mind. These mantras have incredible power, both aloud and inward. So we'll do three together. Breathing in. Oh. Feel the vibration in your body, breathing in. the fruits of our practice today spread outwards in all directions and help to end the suffering of all beings everywhere. Bow deeply to each one of you. The light in me sees the light in you. <laughs>